<clears throat> all right, so our final section here, 15.6, is all about right triangle trigonometry. So we have two things to talk about in this section. Number one is the trigonometric ratios. Ratios. So we're going to discuss where they come from, uh, their definitions according to right triangles. And then the second thing we're going to look at is solving right triangles. So let's take a look at a general right triangle, and hopefully yours looks a little better than mine. So typically, right triangles are named for their endpoints A, B, C, and they have sides little a, little b, little c. Whoa, that doesn't quite look like a c. So we call them little a, little b, little c is as tradition. The variable always goes across from the angle that it is. So this would be angle a, angle b, angle c at each of these. Now we have three trigonometric ratios. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. Now Sine gets shortened to SIN, cosine gets shortened to COS, and tangent gets shortened to TAN. And then each of these <coughs> is a function with an argument in it. So just like f of x or g of x, we have sine of something, cosine of something, tangent of something. Now the special thing about the trig functions, the inputs, for trig functions are always angles or angle measures. So sine of A, cosine A, tangent A. And then you can construct, we're going to build all of them, but we're going to start with focusing on angle A. So sine, cosine, and tangent have a mnemonic device to help you remember how they work. So sine is always opposite side over hypotenuse. I guess I could write side here. Cosine is always adjacent side over hypotenuse. And tangent is always opposite side over adjacent side. So for angle A in our triangle here, the opposite side is directly across is A. The hypotenuse is always C across from the 90 degree angle. The cosine, the adjacent side, is B over the hypotenuse, which is C. And then tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side, A over B. So when you're trying to remember how these are constructed, we take these letters here and we construct the mnemonic device, which you may have heard is SOCATONA. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that this is the mnemonic to help you remember. And it just takes these letters so you know how to construct them. So let's take a look at what sine, cosine, and tangent of the other angles. So sine of B would be opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of B is little b. The hypotenuse is still C, so this is B over C. Cosine B adjacent to B is little a. Hypotenuse is always C. 
and then tangent B is opposite, which is B, over A. And we can also construct them for angle C, cosine of C, tangent of C. Now, because C is a 90 degree angle, some special things are going to happen here. It has the same construction, so sine is still opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the opposite of C is the hypotenuse C, so sine of C, or sine of 90 degrees, is always 1. Cosine is the adjacent. Well, cosine, how do you pick which one's the adjacent? You actually can't. So this is undefined because there's two options. And so this is not defined for a 90 degree angle. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up cosine and tangent. So cosine should be adjacent over hypotenuse. And because there are two adjacent sides, you can think of this that there's no one adjacent side or there's no adjacent side because there's two of them. So we actually, this is zero. And if you take a college algebra class, they'll discuss why cosine of 90 is equal to zero. You won't typically ever find cosine of C because it's zero. And then something even weirder happens for tangent since it's supposed to be opposite over adjacent and we say that there are no adjacent sides, that would be C over zero, which is undefined. So a little bit of a special case here because C is 90 degrees. For the most part though, you'll only be looking at angle measures of the two non 90 degree angles to get what we want for this class. <coughs> So we're going to look at a little example to walk through. So given the triangle, A, B, C, C being the 90, we have 5, 12, and 13, find all three trig ratios of A and B. So at this point, you've seen how these are defined. You should be able to do this. So I recommend you pause the video and try it out and see what you can determine. So I'm going to walk through the solution. So sine A is opposite over hypotenuse, 5 over 13. Sine B, or yeah, sine B opposite over hypotenuse is 12 over 13. Cosine A is 12 over 13. Cosine B is 5 over 13. And then tangent A is 5 over 12 and tangent B is 12 over five. So you may notice something very specific that's happening here, a pattern. Between these pairs of trig ratios. So this comes down to what we call our, the complementary angle properties of two angles. So. First, let's, you may or may not remember what complementary angles means. So complementary angles these are two angles that have measurements that add to 90. degrees, or A plus B equals 90. Both of these are in degrees. Now, 
this is always going to be true for a right triangle, right? So that's a special property of right triangles for any right triangle. The sum of the two non 90 degree angle must be 90. That's always the case because the sum of the right angle or the angles of all triangles, so the sum of all three angles. of any triangle must equal 180 degrees. This has a special name. It's not important to know the name of that property. But this does mean some things for our trig ratios. So if we have our right triangle, A, B, and C, and we have a little or little a little b little c sine of a equals cosine of b equals a over c and we can see that here 5 over 13 5 over 13 cosine of a equals sine of b equals b over c and tangent a equals 1 over tangent B. So this gives us some tricks for what we call solving right triangles, which is what we're going to showcase in the next example. Uh, so let's take a look at an example and make use of those little shortcuts. So solve the following triangle. Our triangle is going to be A, B, C, 140 inches, little a, little c, and 62 degrees. So whenever you're told to solve a triangle, you need to identify the values of all six sides and angles. So we have to find values of angle A, B, C, and sides little a, little b, little c. Now, you have to be given some of this information. You can't solve a triangle without first starting somewhere. That's why they've given us these values. So for us, we already know that a equals 62 degrees. Since c is the 90 degree angle, we know that little big c is 90 degrees. We don't know what B is. That's supposed to be a question mark. Little a, we don't know. Little b, we know is 140 inches. And little c, we don't know. So we need to find these three things. So let's start with the easy one, which is angle B. So because we know that a plus b plus c has to equal 180, and we know that C equals 90 because it's the right angle. That gives us our complementary rule A plus B has to equal 90. And we know that A is 62 degrees. So that means that B has to equal 28 degrees. <clears throat> so knowing this angle measure, we can find the rest of them. So let's take a look at how we would solve for part for side A. So this is where our trig ratios come into play. So for side A, it's related to side C by our sine, 
It's also related to side B or this 140 by cosine. So what you want to do is you generally want to pick what you have the most information for. So we know the angle measure for A, we know little a, and we know side B, little b. So what we want to do is pick cosine. Cosine of A is the, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, we want to pick cosine. Should be 140 over C. And so the reason we're picking cosine is because this will have two known quantities because this is cosine of 62 degrees. And so we can solve for C by multiplying and get 140 equals C times cosine 62, or C equals 140 divided by cosine 62. And you'll notice every calculator, scientific and graphing, has degrees and it has these three trig functions. So you can plug in cosine 62 and do 140 divided by that. And when you get that, you get around 298. And since B is in inches, C is gonna be in inches. So this is 298 inches. This we found to be 28 degrees. And then the last step, now that we have our second side is we can go back to A. And since we know that this is now roughly 298, we can use either or. Now, what we should do is use the one that we didn't approximate. You'll know if you're following along that this 298 isn't exact. We, I rounded it a little bit. So when you're picking your values, I wanna use tangent of A, which would be little a over little b, or tangent 62 degrees equals a over 140. And then solving for A, we get A equals 140 times tangent 62 degrees. And then you get A is approximately 263 inches. And so we can come back up here, cross this out and write 263 inches. So, when you're told to solve a triangle, as I said, those are the six things you have to identify, all three angles and all three sides. I do have some tricks for you to help you out. The first one you've already seen before, it's the Pythagorean theorem. And that has an R in it. So we have a right triangle, little a, little b, little c. Pythagorean theorem says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. These are all side lengths. So that gives you a little bit of a trick to be able to find side lengths. If you know two of them, you can always solve for the third instead of using the trig ratios and those will be more exact. Uh, we also have two special triangles that makes solving triangles really fast. So we have what's called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So that triangle looks something like this. We have our 90 degrees. This here is 30 degrees, which makes this 60 degrees by our complementary angles. And when we have 30 and 60, the side length across from 30, if this is x, whatever that number is, the hypotenuse is always 2x, and the other side is always x times the square root of 3. So this gives you a quicker shortcut, and we'll do a little example of this in a second. And our other special triangle is the 45, 45, 90. So that triangle has 45 degrees 
and by our complementary angles, 45 degrees. And then if our side lengths, because they have the same angle, it's an isosceles triangle, so they have the same length, x and x, the hypotenuse is always x times the square root of 2. So these are our two special triangles, along with the Pythagorean theorem, allows us to identify triangles faster and easier when we're trying to solve them. So let's solve an example of one of these, and we'll have to suss out which is which, which one we have in this example. So a lot of times problems aren't going to tell you this is a special triangle or not. Uh, you're going to have to figure it out and decide for yourself if it's special or not. So you'll just be told it's usually solve the following triangle. In our triangle, A, B, C, 60, A, 2, B. So when you're looking at this right off the bat from the 60 degrees, we know that A is 30 degrees, and then we can use our special triangle. Since this is 2, this should be 2 times x, this should be x, and this should be x times the square root of 3. So that means that little a, since this is 2 times x is just 2, little a needs to be 1, and that means b has to be square root 3. And you can see how fast we solve that using special triangles instead. So let's try another one here. I'll make it triangles. And we'll do this one. And we'll do A, B, C. And this will be C, 1, and 1. So because this is isosceles, don't know if that's spelled right. Because this is isosceles, they're both the same side length, there's only one option that these two angles equal each other, A equals B, and that only works if A equals 45 degrees, and B equals 45 degrees. And so we have our 45, 45, 90, which means that C, since this is 1, is 1 times the square root of 2. So when you can identify these special triangles, you can solve them extremely quickly. And it's all about recognizing when you have it and when you don't. But there's going to be problems like this in the homework. Where you're solving triangles using the trig ratios to solve other kinds of problems based on triangles. Uh, this does end our lectures. This is our last section of the class.